The doors to the Viridian Tea House are open once more. Hello everyone, it's another video. I got tons of stuff to talk about, but first just a little bit of news. So for those of you who follow me on social media, you may have seen the notice that the Wheat Witch Farmers Market was canceled this week due to a thunderstorm. Uh, we will be back next week and uh, if anything changes, I'll be sure to make posts on social media. Uh, still a vendor at the Golden Farmers Market and Golden. Hours are from 8 to 1 on Saturdays. So come on by and, and just get your fill of veggies and soaps and all sorts of stuff. And my new book, Purple Roses, a collection of poetry, prose, and short stories is now out. This is actually my first uh, purchase copy. I'm really excited about this. I, I self-published it. So for those of you who don't know, many of my books are published through Pro Se Productions but then a lot is also published through me on Amazon KDP. But this is, as I put in the back, Purple Roses is the latest collection of poetry, prose, and short stories from Kimberly B. Richardson. This book is a review of what matters in life, how we view our lot, how we live our lives, and a willingness to embrace our creativity and imagination. In this book, reading is a sacred art toxic situations are left behind and wonder is encouraged. So yeah, you can get copies of uh, my lovely new book through Amazon. Uh, sometime in the future, I don't know when, I'll have copies of Purple Roses in my Etsy store, but for now you can purchase this through Amazon. And the ISBN number, if you need that, is 979-839-9900. Two nine zero nine five. So uh, I'll also post this on the video once this has been uploaded as well. So you can grab yourself a copy of this book and let me know what you think about it. Please, I, I would love all sorts of feedback. Just nothing really bad. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm a writer, what do you expect? But yeah, this is the new book, Purple Roses, and the cover art was done by my boyfriend, J.W. Bullard. You've seen many of his pieces on my tea labels, and he also has several watercolor pieces up for sale in my Etsy store. Plus, he is a published author. And oh yes, and my Etsy store currently has copies of his new book, Lost Dreams Bookshop, as well as his second book, The Engine Key. So grab yourself a copy and uh, enjoy my boyfriend's words. So speaking of words, let's go ahead and get started with some of these book reviews. Actually, one's a book and one's a zine. So I'm going to start with the magazine first. So I have to admit, people in, in New Mexico, it's like they're just surrounded by this never-ending flow of creativity truly truly so and i am so happy that i finally got a copy of null space magazine so if you've never heard of it this is the brainchild of andy torres who is uh the owner and i guess the ceo of mobius theory company so if you've ever seen this little dude he's the one responsible for it so there's like stickers and t-shirts and all sorts of things he's always doing events and he's always posting about new items in his store and now about null space magazine so what exactly is this magazine all about so let me read a little bit of his introductory letter Greetings from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Welcome wanderers to the first ever edition of Null Space Magazine. Here we celebrate all things offbeat, wondrous, and awe-inspiring about life, the Southwest, and the entire galaxy at large. This publication is rooted in New Mexico, but it is for anyone, or rather anyone that would tune in and listen. A print magazine is an idea I have had for a very long time. I envisioned a zine and spirit, a space to share simple topics that interest me and my friends, and a way to celebrate where I live. Nothing too crazy. But now, even the most innocuous topic seems divisive. Forget politics. The things I have traditionally gone to for an escape have become toxic, music, video games, Star Wars, even pizza is not immune. I believe it's necessary for us to listen again, to embrace perspectives and ideas, and to break out of the echo chambers of our own narrow field of view. 
Through these papers, I hope to foster a community of curious and open-minded individuals who are eager to learn about the world around them and to see the beauty and wonder in the things they may have never considered before. So what exactly is a null space? To me, that means a place that contains no points, an empty space. As humans, we are programmed to fill those spaces with hobbies and interests to enrich and expand our lives. We are a complex collection of thoughts, practices, and hobbies, and we fill our lives with these nuances always. My question is, why should we ever stop learning and gaining new knowledge? And what if this information was provided without judgment or hard set rules straight from the minds of people that have experienced vast enjoyment in their everyday lives? No Space Magazine is not bound by a single minded interest and leaves behind the toxicity of factions. No need to pick a side here. While each issue will have a common theme, this space serves as an exploration of all corners of a creative mind. We love fandoms. Fandoms introduce a space for like-minded individuals, but will often reach a point of eliteness and a lack of compassion that pushes people away. With Null Space Magazine, I want to open conversations, explore the vast worlds of what we all love the most, and create a space for people to envelop themselves in. And there's more to the letter, but you get the gist of it. And this is just part of a trend that I'm seeing these days. You know, taking the gloves off here, people are getting fed up. They're getting fed up with the fighting. They're getting fed up with the I'm right and you're wrong. And let me tell you why you're wrong. The arguments, the never ending arguments over some of the most trivial matters. And I'm seeing more and more people taking a stand against this and saying, I've had enough of the noise. Whatever happened to the art of conversation? Whatever happened to the art of debating with someone in a healthy manner and coming to the realization and agreement that while you may not agree with each other, you can respect each other. No one's yelling, no one's pointing fingers, no one's saying, you know, you're wrong and I'm right. We need more of that, honestly. And No Space Magazine is one of those delicious facets of we need more of this. <clears throat> we need more conversation. We need more understanding. We need more of a desire and a passion to learn and to grow. If there's something that you don't, you, you're not too sure about, but you want to learn, you learn. And then meeting people along the way who may be further along the path than you, starting at the beginning or right there with you, you can learn and grow with each other and within yourself. And this is one of those areas, honestly. So the theme for this issue is about death. That's the one thing that everybody has to go through. Everybody on this planet has to go through death. And a lot of people have misconceptions about it. A lot of people get scared or they don't want to think about it or they don't want to talk about it or they're just heading straight towards it going, I don't care, whatever. This magazine brought up some interesting points of different perspectives of death. And uh, I found it inter personally interesting because for those of you who don't know, I am part of a death positive group where we sit around and we discuss our feelings about death. Um, we talk about if we've gone through any recent deaths with you know friends or family or whatever. And then if somebody else just has like, you know, I've just really had this idea, I'm just gonna share it with everybody. We may not agree, but it's a great way to deal with a topic that some people do enjoy talking about. And we learn together and separately. So with this issue involving death, this was well done, um, beautiful, uh, um, pictures and illustrations and photography and great interviews, but just overall, if you're trying to expand your mind in terms of, you know, reading more periodicals or reading books, you need to get a copy of Null Space Magazine. You really, really do. And I'm trying to see here. Um, so there's, there's a lovely interview about a punk band called Lipstick Stains. And let's see, there are a couple of artists. 
Uh, there's talking about upcycling with Kelly, also known as Sue Minimal. And what else? Um, oh yeah, this one photographer, Ryan Speth, and uh, photography like this. You can just see just a little bit about this. After a series of losses and lots of external pressure weighing me down, I took a small vacation to gather my head. I spent a week in the high desert in California, in and around Mojave. Astronauts often talk about the overview effect after time in orbit. There was something about spending extended time alone in the desert. The experience can change you. And I have to admit, when I, the first time I ever went to a desert was in New Mexico. It was the White Sands uh, National Monument. Uh, I think it was the National Park or something like that. And I remember driving out onto the sand and seeing the signs that say, you know, this is the last stop to get water. Anything beyond this stop, you're on your own. The desert does something to you. It really does. You know, I used to wonder, like, why, are people, why do people have these, you know, fantastic uh, life experiences in the desert? I mean, it's, it's the desert. Yeah, it's the desert. And so in looking at Ryan Speth's photography, it just, it, I, I resonated with that. I thought, he gets it. He really does get it. So, yes, Null Space Magazine by Andy Torres of Mobius Theory receives five pots of groovy tea from Viridian Tea House. Andy, if you're watching this video, thank you so much for this magazine. Thank you, thank you, and please, I hope I, I'm, I'm ready for issue two. I really am, so thank you. And thanks to all the contributors for Null Space Magazine too. Thank you. So the next book is actually an author I've been meaning to read and I delayed and delayed and delayed and many thanks to Denver Public Library for having, uh, I think all of her books. I think she's written, she wrote five books and a collection of short stories. And this is Voyage in the Dark by Jean Rees. And for those of you who are kind of familiar with her name, the one novel that everybody knows is Wide Sargasso Sea, which talks about um, Mr. Rochester's first wife and her origin story, which it's on my list. I will read it and I probably will review it on Viridian Tea House. But this took my breath away. Beautiful, beautiful, tragic writing. You know, they always say, write what you know. And apparently with the five books and her short stories, she wrote about her life. So she actually lived in the Caribbean, a uh, British born Caribbean. Uh, like she was British, but born in the Caribbean. And I think she moved to London and just the trials and tribulations of living her life. So I'll read the back of it for you. Often considered Jean Reese's most autobiographical novel, Voyage in the Dark is a masterful and moving portrayal of a young woman on the precipice of disaster. That's true. Having relocated from her beloved childhood home in the West Indies, Anna Morgan struggles to adjust to cold and, in and inhospitable England, where she now works as a chorus girl, traveling the country to dank boarding rooms and shabby theaters a far cry from the glamorous life she envisioned. Her luck seems to change for the better when she catches the eye of a wealthy older man who dotes on her and sets her up in London. But while Anna falls in love with him, allowing herself to depend on him completely, he grows tired of her and leaves her. Though her old friends and new flatmate urge her to move on, Anna can't let go of an affair that felt so much like salvation and begins a long spiraling decline. I can't add anything else to that. It was beautiful to read and very tragic. The spiral, you can feel it. I mean, you, you, you can just see Anna just falling apart piece by piece after being rejected by this older man. But it was a great read. And if you are you know, trying to read more classics, I highly recommend Voyage in the Dark by Jean Rhys. And I keep wanting to say Jean because of the Francophile in me, but Voyage in the Dark receives five pots of tea from Viridian Tea House. 
and I've got uh, another one of her books due to Denver Public Library upstairs waiting to be read so I will be reviewing that one very soon but yes this this was quite the book oh and actually from the introduction by Julia Alvarez Anna's story speaks not only to a past situation and self but to all of us today Reading Voyage in the Dark, we feel an unsettling and eerie resonance with the times we are living in now. Yeah, beautiful book. And uh, Jean Reese, 1890 to 1979, what, uh, one of the foremost writers of the 20th century, is the author of Wide Sargasso Sea, her last and best known novel, as well as Quartet After Leaving Mr. McKenzie, that's the one that I just checked out, and Good Morning, Midnight, all available in Norton Paperback. So yeah, you owe it to yourself to read her works. They're, they'll wrench your heart, but you you can't help but wanna continue reading the book. Her, the way that she commands words just pulls you in and it's sad and it's tragic and you just wanna hand the girl a cigarette and a whiskey and just be like, oh my God. Still a beautiful book, very beautiful, and I thank you. So in the tea portion today, I didn't actually make any of my tea and no tea review today, but I do wanna talk about one of my blends. So this is Tea Traveler's Blend. This is one of my green tea blends. Now currently I only have it in sampler, uh, uh, sampler pack which as you know I started doing again and you can find all my samplers and regular bags on my Etsy store so the tea travelers blend <clears throat> is green tea lemongrass chamomile spearmint and hibiscus so the story behind the tea travelers blend is for those of you who have read my books I came up with this part of the other world that is infused with tea where basis is tea a tea leaf becomes sentient and becomes a deity and so you have tea mystics and the hand of darjeeling don't ever trust a member of the hand of darjeeling you have tea merchants and tea travelers the tea travelers in my world are kind of like bards except instead of singing they read stories and they make tea for you and you never know where you're going to find one or where one will find you you can either be on the human side of the veil or on the other world, world side of the veil. You can be walking through a forest and all of a sudden you see a woman with long dreadlocks wearing a multicolored dress standing by a table and two chairs saying, I was waiting for you. Have some tea and I'll tell you a story. So that's the basis behind the tea travelers. And for the record, all of my green tea blends are made with Japanese sencha, which is a green tea, a kind of vegetal kind of tasting, but I love how well it blends with the ingredients, specifically with the tea travelers blend. So yes, right now I only have tea travelers blend in a sampler, $2 each. And if I happen to see you at Golden or Wheat Ridge, provided I haven't sold out, you can get a sampler pack of the Tea Traveler's Blend and maybe you might get a visitor. <laughs> Who knows? So on to the meditation portion. And today's tea, this is one of my favorite teas by a yogi. It's the uh, Positive Energy Tangerine, which I love. Oh my God, I love. And actually, let's see here. Ah, so they always have really cool quotes on the backs of their tea tags and it says, what can you appreciate in this moment? So I think that's a great segue into the meditation. So one, make sure that you have a glass of water or a cup of your favorite tea nearby. You can either be seated, standing up or laying down. And normally we just focus on our breathing. But while you're breathing, Think about this question. What can you appreciate in this moment? What can you? So I will freely admit today has not been a great day for me. And uh, yeah, it really hasn't. But I'm going to think about what can I appreciate in this moment as I breathe. So if you're ready, then let's begin.
And now let's end this meditation with a deep breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Slowly open your eyes or allow your eyes to come back into focus. And now let's have a sip of tea or water. And my answer for what can I appreciate in this moment? What can I appreciate in this moment is enjoying a cup of tea that I like and sharing it with all you viewers out there and having a moment of peace and tranquility so I can appreciate that. And you know, it's, it's Shabbat, so uh, when the sun goes down and um, this is a great way to prepare for it. So enjoying a cup of tea with you. Thank you so much. I appreciate this moment. So that's all I have for today. Many thanks to the ghost of Jean Reese and to the wonderful folks at Null Space Magazine and Mobius Theory for their wonderful contributions in terms of words. And to each and every one of you for sticking with these crazy videos and watching, watching them. I, I just really appreciate it. I really do. And um, I hope that your day and the rest of your week goes well. And as always, take care of yourself and each other. Raise your teacup high. And always remember that to drink tea is to enjoy life. I'll see y'all really soon. Bye for now.